Why El Morocco? Well, I've been thinking about this collection for a long time. At the beginning of lockdown, because we were so contained, I was thinking of the far away, the magical, the illusion, a mirage, and I was thinking of Arabia. And then, in fact, I visited Morocco early in this year, which is the closest part of Arabia, this magical, exotic world. And I thought I must do a collection on this. And at the same time, I was looking to images of El Morocco, the famous nightclub in New York in the 40s and 50s. And the new collection, El Morocco, is a mashup of the two. So hat number two is called Khadija, after the fabulous model, Khadija, who I worked with when I first went to Paris. It's going to be draped tailor's linen in a big tube. This is Khadija here wearing one for Thierry Mugler. And during my research, I came across this image, which was a menu cover from the 1940s. of This girl with huge draperies going on around her head. And it reminded me of one of the very first hats that I made. There's a photograph of it. And this was 1979 or 1980, very new romantic, in cotton muslin, which I dyed and embroidered. So what we did was to create this toile. This is glazed linen, but the thing about it, it's going to be hand-painted by a Moroccan artist called Khalid Bankaroum. It's naive painting and with golden sand and palm trees, and we will see what it looks like. The next hat is called Kaz Ate. When I asked Khalid what was the thing which represented Morocco to the world, and he said, well, Kaz Ate, which is Moroccan tea. When I think of Moroccan tea, it's the mint tea, of course, but also the beautiful little gilded glasses that they came in. So I'm going to make a hat which looks like a Moroccan tea glass. So this is the shape of the hat. It's made out of clear plastic, so it can look like glass. We can't really make a hat out of glass. It just would be too dangerous. And it's embroidered. And basically, I've used this pattern and readapted it. Also, in his painting, there is this couple drinking tea. This is the pattern, the top of the crown. This is the side band. And then this is the brim. This is also a photograph of what the embroidery is like, which is going to be little sugar beads, tiny little beads, all sewn on individually onto the navy blue tulle. And this is Cas Ate. So I hope it's going to look really magical. Um, and here's some mint in it too. <laughs> the next hat is called Mejorel. That is named after the Mejorel Gardens in Marrakesh, which is Yves Saint Laurent's house, created by Jacques Mejorel, who was a painter. In the 1940s, Marlene Dietrich, who had consummate style and wore hats magnificently, was an habitué at El Morocco nightclub. You can tell that because she's sitting on the blue and white zebra print banquette. Just before that, in 1936, she'd actually made a film, The Garden of Allah, and here is her in her very famous chiffon dress in the desert. She doesn't really wear hats in it, but in the publicity, for the film, this is her almost with a hat on, but they've superimposed some palm leaves. So I've recreated this effect and it's a little headdress like this. You can see it's a, an Alice band. Inspired by the color of the zebra print, it's going to be in these navy blue, little very, very soft baby ostrich feathers and the spines are going to be embroidered. Now this is a technique I used when I did the decoration for this Dior Haute Couture dress in 2003. The dress was embroidered with feathers and then the spines were indicated with embroidery as well. 
So that's what it's going to look like. I think it's going to give a very opulent and unusual effect. I think this is going to look really, really beautiful. I can't wait. If only Marlene was alive today, I'm sure she would like to wear it. The final hat is called the Grand Café de Paris. This is revisiting to the fez mask that I created for Jean-Paul Gaultier in 1983. A fez is probably the most important hat of my career. A fez is also one of the most distinguishing hats of Morocco. I wore one in the video of Culture Club's Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? I imagined I was in the Grand Café de Paris in 1942. From that, Jean-Paul Gaultier was in touch and he was at the height of his fame and he invited me to work with him. And this is one of the fezes that I created for him and it was a mask and it has gone on to be one of the most famous hats of its time. I even have here a book of Polaroids of all the different hats I made for his collection. He was so happy with all the hats, he pushed me out onto the runway and therefore really started my career in Paris. Thank you, Jean-Paul. This is even when it was exhibited in London at the Barbican with all the Polaroids. The Fez continues to be important for me. From 1994, this is a, a Fez called Moroccan Bazaar. And from spring, summer 06, this is Khartoum. So when I was working out the hats for this collection, I really wanted to do an update on this exactly. So this is a toile of the original shape. We refined the shape again. People know these in color, but actually the original was done in black. So instead of black felt as the original, we're going to be making it in black straw with black and red shaded tears. Anyway, that's the story of the collection. <laughs>